Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Here we go. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got some special guests joining us this morning. Our uh, folks. We have Miss Pat. Miss Pat and Bridget Jordan Wolf. Cooper. And Jordan Cooper. How y'all yeah. feeling, man? Good the fuck morning. Yeah. Well, good morning. Man, what you doing drinking Coca Cola? I know you're from Atlanta, but damn. Is Pat drinks some water or something? Damn, she got coffee and coffee. Don't help the ass, pretty skin ass. Nigga. I need you to wake me the fuck up. Shit, I, I flew in this bitch at 3 o'clock and then he had no car to pick me up. I'm tired. All the motherfuckers out there trying to pick me up at the airport. I'm like, excuse me, do you think I don't see the news? Y'all ain't about to take this. I got on a spank. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take some time unwrapping, huh? Oh, well, a whole lot of time. You ain't never pulled a fat girl. <laughs> well, first of all, I feel like we should be celebrating, right? Because it's been such a journey for you to get your show on TV. Well, first of all, let's introduce yes. you to Miss Pat, because you haven't you been, ain't never been here with Miss Pat. You haven't met Angela with Miss Pat? No, I've never Angela met her. But we've spoken. I read her okay. book before, Rabbit. I've done all of that, so I'm familiar. Well, with nice Pat. to finally fucking beat you, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> she okay. waited until you got a TV show over to be here for an interview, Miss Pat. Well, some niggas like famous people. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't there yet. I ain't there yet. I still got my layaway at I'm trying to be blacker than a motherfucker. You still got layaway for real? Hell yeah, I do layaway. Birds brought their layaway back. You ain't heard. No, oh, no you ain't fucking heard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is. You said Virgil's. Burlington. Burlington. Oh, Burlington. Burlington. The Coke yeah, factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it ain't no Coke factory. Where the fuck you been? They been drop Coke. <laughs> <laughs> you got that kind of money, nigga? You don't know Burlington drop Coke? No, I thought they, they were still a Coke, Coke factory. Yeah. What the fuck what kind of money y'all got? Oh, it's still, it's still Seals and Roebuck, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you see what Burlington got. You got Seals and Roebuck no more? Where the fuck you been, <laughs> DJ Envy? <laughs> <laughs> you got that kind of money. You won't chop at Seals no more for your craftsman too. <laughs> oh, they did drop the Coke factory. This is a department store now. You didn't believe her? Yeah. Damn, I didn't know the stock price 352 a share too. Wow. Well, fuck the stock prices. I'm talking about what they got in the store, nigga. <laughs> what you got on layaway, Miss Pat? Some school, some extra school clothes for the kids and towels for the house. All kind of shit. Mm. I put all kind of they have water. You can put food on layaway. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, congratulations on Miss Pat. No, we are proud of you. We so proud of you, man. Thank you. Pat and Thank Jordan, you. like we've seen the journey was three networks before it landed on BET Plus. Three, no, three networks, three writers, cry tears, shit. Damn. I man. couldn't suck the right dick in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I took five years. I, I, you know I got vertical. I can't be sucking no extra dicks. <laughs> I can't do it extra dicks. I, mean, I got high flesh and bitch wig fly. Nigga think I'm Charlemagne the God. <laughs> no. <laughs> Mama be on shot me. But you are still working with Lee Daniels, so you didn't have to it's, worry about that. Whoa. 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 <laughs> whoa. whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. <laughs> Get a wow. big five. No. <laughs> I'm saying that wasn't gonna wow. happen. <laughs> I don't hey. think Lee want me sucking his exactly. dick. Exactly, that's I'm what I'm saying. I already had Lee. I'm talking about other people. <laughs> you already had. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had Lee. <laughs> all right. All right, let's take all that. All right, Jesus Christ. How was the process, though, Jordan? <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. I like. Well, it, it's a crazy story. I got introduced to Pat in high school. My dad. Uh, I was a senior in high school. My dad saw her on a morning show. And recording was like, yo, you gotta watch her. Like, she's hilarious. What I tell you about like, B you gotta... when you do interviews? <laughs> yo, you gotta watch her. She my mama. She my mama. God Fuck damn. I'm his mama. Um, but she, she, my dad was like, you gotta watch her. She's hilarious. Her story's ridiculous. So I watched it. And I was like, dang, like, her story's crazy. She's funny as hell. She need to write a book. Then a year later, I was in college. She wrote a book. But Rabbit. it was like $35. Yeah, and I couldn't afford it. So I screenshot it. I was like, when I get some money, I'm gonna come back and get it. Then, never was able to get the book. Then I wrote my play, Ain't No Mo, that Lee saw at the mm -hmm. public. And he was like, yo, I'm doing this thing with Miss Pat, uh, this comedian. We don't have a concept for her. Uh, so see if you can read this book and see if you can come up with a concept for a show. And I read it, and I immediately saw in my head this this sitcom with a live audience. Because we've, we're we so used to, like, these corny sitcoms nowadays. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to, like, All in the Family, Good Times, The Jeffersons. But I wanted to, it to be R-rated in front of a live studio audience. Which I thought. Oh, he Bro, was you 16. Crazy. What you know about the Jefferson? Listen, good time? listen. Know, DVDs. This motherfucker told me to watch Lucy one night. <laughs> Lucy. I'm like, Lucy in 
like I said, if you don't give me the fuck out of this theater, my panty <laughs> line away, I'm sleeping, nigga, it's 10 o'clock at night. Old people been in the bed. <laughs> Lucy. No, I had to watch it because I wanted her to know the history of like I where everything was coming from. I don't give a fuck no history from. coming from. I don't even give a fuck about black history. <laughs> <laughs> Not at 10 o'clock at night, motherfucker, I'm sleeping. We up in Beverly Hills, so I'm watching Lucy. Everybody laughing, I don't dozed off like a motherfucker. Yeah, like, <laughs> bitch, I'm sleeping. I told you before you brought this Why was your panty line away? Her panty line is always wet. Why? Because it's a 64 Chevy, nigga. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry your wife don't tell all her bees. <laughs> Everybody got a little drip paint on right there. Your shit ain't tight like the third grade. <laughs> I cannot. I will say I don't have kids. It's still pretty tight. Uh, that what you think. Pull your underwear off and smell them. <laughs> Motherfucker, I'm talking about that shit be tight. Now, I hear too when a nigga going in, but it's on his own when he get in. <laughs> I don't know where you going to park it at. <laughs> oh, I got tight pussy. No, you don't. <laughs> you used to have tight pussy. So did I. I got the shit to get me by to help me stay married. <laughs> Sometimes he whispers me here, can you use your stomach muscles? <laughs> uh-uh. You tighten your stomach on him? <laughs> This bad is crazy. When you're fat and you don't like a nigga, you let him stick it in your navel, Angelique. And then you <laughs> your navel. Yeah, a fat girl got deep navel like vaginas. You be like, I ain't getting this nigga no real I never, pussy. I I've heard underarm. <laughs> yeah. When you fat, like I got a big hole in my stomach like my navel used to be there. So when fat girl, we trick niggas. When we don't want to really give you no pussy, we let you stick it in the navel. So when you say you fuck me, no, nigga, you, all you did was navel. <laughs> <laughs> So how much, well, thank God, it's, it's, thank God, y'all ain't got to worry about cleaning this up because listen, she curses constantly. Listen, but that was the thing. I'm a that was the thing. The I devil eat is a lie. I eat that was the thing. Bitch. I see God in you. That was the thing. Was so that do I. She like the, these networks. I think at the beginning they really wanted to put her on network TV, like Fox and all this. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want it to 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 be fake. I didn't want it to be. I wanted her to be able to be herself. Like if you watch those old shows, like like Sanford and Son, like Red Fox. If you listen to his comedy album, he is not Fred Sanford. Mm-hmm. Like he speaks a totally different way. And so I wanted her to be able to be on camera and just be Pat and just say whatever the fuck comes to mind. So the show got a lot of fucks and motherfuckers and niggas My, in it. Yes, a lot of love. Yeah, when I saw it. when I saw I saw that thumb joke. I'm not gonna give it away, but when I saw that thumb joke, I said, "Yeah, they letting Miss Pat be Miss Pat." Yeah. I, said, yeah, I played it for Charlamagne like twice. That thumb joke. You know the thumb joke in the first episode. <laughs> you know the first. Yeah, stick the thumb. Oh. <laughs> I told Charlamagne, Charlamagne was like, "No, let me play it for you." Now. <laughs> well, I, I let Joe Rogan see that he couldn't get up the click joke. He's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. It's yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. like, you know how you see shit when people trying to push something on you. And, but it's funny. And half of that shit he pulled out of my first album, my material, which is fun. And it's like that opening scene, mm-hmm. that shit really happened to me. Talking to, I've, I live in Indiana. Mm-hmm. So I would fly Southwest at the time before they gave me the deal. I was A1 on Southwest. My father, I was the first nigga on the plane. <laughs> I was a shit. Okay. So I would get my own seat and block it off. But I would always block it off for a white man because I wanted to have uncomfortable conversation about race and life while we fly back to Indiana. Mm. And that's how that scene came. I would tell, no other writer would listen to me. Mm. But then I, I, he listened to me. I said, I think it'd be great if you open it up because it's about a school shooting. That mm-hmm. shit happened with mm-hmm. my daughter and all of that. And he just took yeah. that from my life and my stand-up and he fucking wrote it. Now all of that shit you see when the play over, he the one spent them people money like that. I ain't <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up and stop bagging so much. We gonna get put the fuck out of this studio. <laughs> no, it was like a thing because I wanted it to feel like a, a I wanted it to feel like stand-up meets sitcom. Like mm-hmm. I wanted it to be like a future. Like when you watch Martin, it's sketch comedy meets sitcom because he's playing all these characters. I wanted it to feel like stand-up. So when you watch the show, especially the pilot, it's like she's talking to the live audience and then in the middle of her monologue, the, the set just like rolls in and you just see the, the, the set just transition. But like back to like the process about like how, how it all start, got started. This is this one is a real one. Let me tell you what happened. So basically Lee was like, come up, come up with a concept, right? Come up with a concept. And he goes to Fox and was like, yo, I got this kid. He wrote this show. Like, I, th- I think you guys would love it. They're like, he's still in college. Ain't nobody like we're not we're not about to do that. Fox and, was the first network it was attached to, right? Fox. Yeah. Okay. And then Pat, Pat, whenever we met, she called. She I flew called, on my yep. birthday. To meet him, well, the day after my birthday, because he was like, get on the plane. And I was like, Lee, you got me fucked up. They got to pay me. I just did all these fucking jokes. I can't just run off and leave my money. I got bills to pay. Mm-hmm. So the next day was my birthday, and it was the last day here in New York of his play. And I went to go see it, and I was like, 
I think this kid can do it. So I took his number and I said, look, I'm going to keep it real with you. Hollywood is full of shit. You ain't never done shit, and they don't want shit until somebody done shit. Everybody want to fuck the same person in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. If you get a fat black girl, I need a fat black girl. I said, so right now ain't nobody got no fat black girl. Ain't nobody calling for him. So I said, the only way you're going to get this job is you listen to me. And he was like, what do I need to do? I said, we need to write a strip behind these motherfuckers back. We, and he was like, I said, do you have final draft? This motherfucker straight out of He said, well, I don't got final draft. It was two hundred dollars. I never got final draft in college. No, because, because I was doing. I was doing my. I wrote all my plays on Microsoft for pages. Gotcha. So I gave him my credit card, and uh -huh. I was like, "You sound hungry. Buy yourself something to eat too." <laughs> so, and we stayed up for like two weeks, a week and a half, two weeks straight. As as we writing the pilot. I'm interviewing right. I said, right, nigga, right. They got more interviews for me. Right, nigga, right. And I was waking him up. Get the fuck up. I got four interviews today. And we wrote that fucking pilot and we handed it to Lee. And so what was crazy, because he put his name out. I said, take your fucking name off of it. And cause he thought Which I was, I was like, why are you going to take my name off of it? Well, I said, because if it's fucked up, it's going to fall back on me, mm -hmm. not you. And you still got a chance to get a job. That's what Lee trying to do. And I said, I, don't, I said everybody going to know I ain't do that. Everything's spelt right, nigga. So you. <laughs> 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 I gave it to Lee and he was like who the fuck wrote this I was like me he said bitch everything spelled right <laughs> I said, me and Jordan wrote this and he walked it in and that's how he got the job at oh, Fox wow. the yeah. whole, uh, and then, but then it ended up at Hulu too right Hulu yeah. shot the pilot so Hulu shoot, okay. we sell, we, he takes us he wanted to do he wanted real language in it so it moves us over to Fox 21 yeah. Fox 21 sell it to Hulu this is how much shit we went through Fox, so Hulu shoots the pilot and everybody get involved. We attached Debbie Allen. She shot. This was her first pilot since, since Fresh Prince Fresh of Bel Air. Pr mm -hmm. And this motherfucker asked for Debbie Allen. I said, boy, you done lost your fucking mind. Debbie Allen ain't going to fuck with her. Don't nobody know us. But Lee made a phone call. She read it and liked it. So Debbie Allen get attached. I mean, we shoot the pilot. And and we shooting the fucking pilot, y'all. And I, my spirit, I just pick up on spirit of good people. Mm -hmm. I can tell when you full of bullshit. Yeah. And I said, they're not going to pick it up. And they was like, what are you talking about? I said, my spirit said, I can't say who it is. This motherfucker don't like it. You got to trust and, the discernment. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you. And we was killing it at night. 250 people now. I mean, it was funny. Everybody in Hollywood come out. People people off the lot were coming to watch yeah, this shit. Yeah, we had two shows. We had a 4 o'clock and a 7 o'clock. I told him, packed, I said, packed. listen to me. They're not going to pick it up. And he's like, and I tried to tell the producers, what are you talking about? I said, my spirit said, mm -hmm. this is, they're not going to pick it up. Okay, we shoot it. We go on. I go on back on the road. It took them six months to say no. Valentine's Day, I was getting ready to walk on stage. I saw what I showed in Riley. I my bleep born on my phone said they didn't pick it up. I said, I told you motherfuckers they mm -hmm. were not going to pick it up. Because right. my spirit told me six months ago, mm -hmm. he didn't understand me. That person didn't understand me, and they didn't understand this show. Who was but, the he? But we I can't say, say who the he. But what we the will say that, that it, was, <laughs> it, was their, it was also their, uh, we heard through the grapevine that it was their highest tested pilot ever. It was like That's one of their crazy. most highest tested pilots, but because it was a thing where where I, I don't think that person understood why it was funny or why people would That's get it. That's insane. Sometimes you have a, to know what you don't know. It's a white right. person. Right. Of course, it was a white person. You know, it's a goddamn white, white person. White goddamn mayonnaise. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, you know, and it's okay. It was like, it's not premium content. I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person, you know, I don't give a fuck. Miss Troop told me to, hey, keep moving, motherfucker. The That's dumbest right. question is the question I ask. If you feel like that, it ain't for you, it's for somebody. That's how I never felt like it wasn't going to get picked up. I just felt like sometimes you got to be still and let your shit go through the mm, process. That's right. And right. everything, you, just because you want to be there don't mean you're don't mean it's fault. you're supposed yeah. to be there. Mm -hmm. And we was where we at. Nigga, when BET called and said, Lee was like, BET Plus. I said, what the fuck is BET Plus? Mm -hmm. I didn't know BET had a plus. Because mm -hmm. I, I watched The Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. Mm -hmm. All I like to see is white clicks getting cut off. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't watch the, What the fuck I watched it. I my watched wife watched it. I don't watch it. Yeah, my wife watched it. Bomb. I heard it's good. Yeah. Oh my good. I always watch I it on the good. plane. That's how I, I, I seen the whole it. thing. Oh, you got oh my, I'm, the last season was off the goddamn chain. Why so, they cutting clips off though? Cause they want to control vaginas. You know, oh. white men say you can't. You gotta have babies, but they let y'all clip y'all nuts and they ain't gotta say that shit. It's okay for y'all have empty nuts, but we can't have empty wounds. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, mind your business. Hit my pussy. If I want to stick five crackers and set this motherfucker off like the Fourth of July, it's my pussy. Long as I don't put no juice on y'all, right? True. Correct. Yeah. So ain't nobody gonna tell me what to do about my pussy. I've been to have my abortion the time. My two. You can't keep them all, and all I'm ain't good tax right off. But back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> and all of that's on the show. All of that. All of that. 
insane. So, so BT called. BT <laughs> called, and, and they gave us fucking 10 episodes, and I fuck with people who fuck with me. Word. You know, they was great. It, it was kind of better because they understood it. We right. didn't have to explain Ashy and Nappy Hair right. and fucking the way. They thought Janelle was a nigga name. Yeah, there were people who thought that that they were like, well, should we change the kids' names to sound a little bit too ethnic? I was like, Janelle, Janelle. and Brandon? Right, not at all. And Brandon? That's so <laughs> fucking what? I can see if I put my real daughter named Gary on and not kill. Now, them some nigga names. <laughs> <laughs> Gary on and not kill. <laughs> them some nigga names. But Brandon and Janelle? That's some white kids' yeah. names. Mm-hmm. And then we had questions about, there was a joke about edges, and they were like, what are, what are what edges? Is edges? Oh my gosh. What is edges? I'm like, what the fuck? Wow. It's oh. alopecia on black women when they move their wigs off. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what it is, man. First time I saw that shit, I don't know nothing. I know I'm not picking at anybody with alopecia, but I was at a salon. My, I was at a salon one time. My friend said, "Watch my, watch my client hair, nigga." I watched that wig off her hair. I said, "Her hair fell off." I said, "What the fuck happened?" She said, "She got alopecia." I had never heard of it. I said, mm. "The bitch got apples and peaches in her." <laughs> Is that some new cream of nature? Oh what is that? I've never seen apples and peaches in my life. I said, apples and peaches. I said, this bitch got apples and peaches. She said, I'm oh. pissed. I said, but I was dead ass for real. I said, what the fuck is apples and peaches? She said, bitch, apple oh. peaches. When your hair fall, I said, what the fuck is this shit? You know, I'm from the hood. I'm used to the niggas yanking oh. your tracks out and leave your little balls spot right, out there. Gosh. And you put a little motherfucking suffer eight on it and it grow back. But nigga, I ain't never took a bitch wig off and it looked like that bitch went through a car wash and the motherfucker. <laughs> Nigga, <laughs> 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 she scared the shit out of me. I'm like, you can't imagine that bitch sucking your dick up weed, like man. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 bitch, you got ass and peach. What's wrong? You got can What the fuck is going on with y'all? Well, yeah. hold on, hold on. So after, after, um, the alopecia. That, not the alopecia. <laughs> Adam forgot my train of thought. Fucking with Pit Pat crazy. Yes, man. I'm gonna ask. So how uh, close? Uh, how close uh, 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 of the show is about your your life? Ninety five percent. So your daughter really whipped the girl's ass in school. No, that ain't that was that was that No, she whooped him with education. That's Gary Yeah. Look, yeah. like, she's based off my daughter. She actually wrote on the show. So my daughter went to this all white school and she was just whooping with knowledge. And I was like, that's why you can't get no dick. Mm-hmm. Cause you up here with all this black live matter shit. What ain't black live matter? Just fucking social justice shit. Calm down. You ain't gonna never get no no dick at this all white school. So you, you, too do- black. you wanted your daughter to get dick? Ain't dick good? Oh, I thought one of which one oh, I thought your daughter was a lesbian. Oh, you got two dogs. I got two dogs. Yeah, don't, put, yeah, yeah, don't put the right. lesbian on both of my daughters. Somebody needs some dick, Charlamagne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't have minded her being with a white boy? I wouldn't mind. That's her pussy. Okay. <laughs> what you, I can't go over there and put a stop sign in my kid's pussy. My daughter needs some dick. <laughs> stop sign in your pussy. <laughs> pussy <laughs> stop sign. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I'm not her being with a boy. Anybody who's going to fuck my daughter, if you're going to treat her right, come on by the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh, no. She in the basement. No. She in the basement. <laughs> she in the basement. <laughs> you got to get her out the basement. <laughs> <laughs> she too fucking mean. That's why I told, no. I said, I told, I told my daughter, I said, if you ain't gonna use that pussy gear to me, cause Bobby leaky. <laughs> <laughs> You want to trade the 64 Chevy? Yeah, I want to trade the 64 Chevy <laughs> for, the, for the Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my daughter got a Tesla. I could use that motherfucker. Oh, it run off battery, God too. <laughs> How hard was it to, to be edgy on BET Plus? How hard is it? I know, but did they, I know they had to push back on something. Oh, they did. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a fight. She used to have to cuss me out because I was the fighter when it came to that. Mm-hmm. I just, I just, I just, I just like when we get to actually do things that haven't been done before. And I think BET is taking a big risk. Like they're they're act- I think they're really nervous because they've never gone this I don't far think before. They're nervous. I think No, they, they told me they're nervous. They said they're they're interested. <laughs> they told me they're nervous. They're excited, but they're nervous to see how people respond. Like how are people nervous gonna love from it? any new show. You don't know how I fucking Exactly. Show exactly. Do, but, but especially when you when you doing something that's never been and done. You know, before. even with us, we created something, we using the error and nigga and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So you're gonna have people I had people when we first dropped the first clip like oh you're bringing the black culture down I said hold on nigga get the fuck off my page with that bullshit you think this phone ain't in my head for a boy mm-hmm. I read that shit you, talk, they, they, you know, black people are like, oh, you making black people look bad. No, bitch, your baby daddy make you look bad because he don't pay you child support <laughs> on time. Now, get the fuck off my page. I done told y'all. I read this shit. That phone is in my motherfucking hand, and when I can't read it, I pass it to my kids with the college degree. What that nigga trying to tell me right here? <laughs> <laughs> now, I think it's, 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 it's what, I, what I love about the show, though, is like, 
I feel like because black folks have so little content, whenever somebody's in the spotlight, Wait, we throw everything on, on it. You, you it, it, it don't matter, Miss Pat. Just go. Yeah, the produ- hey, that's what the producers get paid <laughs> yo, for. No? Yo, I had, to, I had to host BET, so they say, Miss Pat, Miss Pat, come up. They was like, she's cursing. This is live. This is live. Well, said, they don't know Miss Pat. Pat then. This is Miss Pat. Wait a minute. I don't supposed to be cursing, do I? No. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. You got Ain't it. Syndicated. It's not yeah. live. It's not live though. Oh, that's why you read it. Out. That's why y'all are in the young. Why y'all didn't tell me not to be cursed? We in a hundred plus markets. You good? Well, oh, so y'all gonna let me curse in the market? I can. You, you can curse, curse anywhere. We just gonna believe it. Oh, you gonna believe it? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. We scared shit out. We gonna believe it and take anything like out that might get you in trouble. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> Only heard one thing so far. <laughs> what was that? Don't worry about it. I'll tell you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, finish the show. Finish the show. Ahead, I, was, I was saying that because black folks have so little content, whenever we do see something, we wanna we wanna harp mm-hmm. on because we want it to represent all of us. But the problem is, my black ain't your black, and your black ain't my black. And I think that the thing about the show is that like each of the characters have their own form of blackness. So there, it's like a mosaic because white people they get to be human That's on right. TV. They get to they get to be complicated. They get to be complex. But the minute that a black character is complex on television, it's a stereotype. It's bringing us all down. But it's like no, it's just a human being. Mm-hmm. It's just a human. That's just how Pat talks. Nobody's sitting there trying to be a puppet, being like, "Oh, black women talk like this." It's not. I'm that's not how shopping Pat talks. vegetables. I'm am an ex drug dealer in the thing, following my dream. What a husband at home jo- chopping vegetables and holding the house down. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I don't. I'm like, bitch. I don't cook in my real life. I mean, girl, I don't cook in my real life. <laughs> so why would I be cooking on TV? I mean, I didn't want to cook on TV. Right. Mm-hmm. You leave, I'm, and I told him I'm not the hustle. I'm not. I'm not Claire Hustle. Exactly. Okay, I'm me. Yep. I'm me. We like seeing Tammy Roman and your chemistry on oh, there, too. Tammy. I thought that was she nice. Was so, she kills man, it. She, she kills, kills it. Tammy did it. Tammy, it's ridiculous. You, you know what's crazy? Let me tell you about the whole the whole mm-hmm. cast in this show. So Jordan had, Jordan, when he first got me, he was sent me, he sent me two people, which was a daddy, and he sent me Tammy Roman. He said, this is your sister, and that's your, that's your husband. So I said, that big old black nigga is not my husband. <laughs> and I said, that crazy-ass woman with that bunnet on her head is not my sister. Because I didn't, I didn't know Tammy. I, I don't watch reality TV. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about neither one of them. So you just saw the video with the bonnet? Bonnet. And I said, that crazy ass woman. Because she was funny. Mm-hmm. I said, that bitch crazy. And she's not my fucking sister. He's like, yes, she is. So when it was time to audition, and um, uh, I kind of had this a darker skinny girl. Because my sister is dark skinny in real life. Mm-hmm. And so really good act. She came in and blow that shit away. The next day, they, the Lee Daniel's sister doing all the cash. She's like, you got to watch Tammy Roman. And I was like, who is Tammy Roman? And he was like, then I Googled it. I was like, she a reality star. She can't act. And he was like, she was like, yes, she can. Listen. Yes, she can. So I said, okay, that bit, that girl walked in that motherfucker. She was that character. And I'm like, okay. And that bitch woke that room mm-hmm. up. I was like, oh my fuck. And you know, when you casting, and especially when it's for your show, you kind of connect. I When she walked out of that room, I was like, that's fucking Denise. You knew it. Yeah. I knew it. I yeah. knew. I said, that's fucking Denise. She fucking killed it. I, and she was undeniable because I was like, I don't want, when I found out she was around, I don't want no fucking reality stuff. Right. I said, I don't got time for all that. And then, you know, and then I started to Google it and I was like, uh, I don't know. And then I was like, fuck it. When she she was undeniable. But she was even even the fact that she was acting before she started reality. Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, is like I was she, her voice, and this is why I sent you her videos in the beginning. Because her voice was in my head when I was writing that character. Denise is one of the only characters that doesn't actually live in Pat's house in real life. That's the character that we put on the show. So like Tammy's voice was always in my head. So when she did it out loud, it was just perfection. Funny too. Perfection. What made Y'all you decide to add that doing? character to the show? My real sister smoked crack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was a thing of like, I, she needed somebody to play off of. She needed. She needed somebody who she could like throw the ball to, and they could throw the ball back, and they can like have a tennis match. And when I tell you these two women on that screen go back and forth and back and forth, wait till you see the finale. Uh-huh. The finale, they like they. It, it's their their performances are top notch storytelling. When I tell you the audience cry, y'all ain't seen uh-huh. no finale like this. Mm-hmm. I had to go home and shake it off. I was really? so glad That's that the dumb. episodes were twist because that was episode 10 and we had to shoot episode 10 before we shot nine because of something happened. And I'm just glad we didn't walk away with those feelings because that shit was heavy. Oh, we really? cannot wait to see that. On the show, Tammy's a recovering addict. So your sis- you say your sister still? Well, yeah. Indulges? Yeah, uh, yeah I indulges. Yeah. She smoke. 
Yeah, same thing. <laughs> yeah. You try to say it nicely. Crack. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> smoke some crack. Smoke some crack. You yes. got to use the uppity words and crack it. <laughs> Damn, I know you're educated, Sh- Charlamagne. I know you're from the street. You're from North Carolina. You say, y- your cousin smoke, right, bitch? <laughs> you, you ain't, you ain't going to hurt my feelings. I mean, your sister smoke. I mean, Your it, sister it, indulges it, in narcotics, no, doesn't no, she? No, my sister smoke narcotics. <laughs> Did she see the show? Your sister see the show? Who? I don't, I block them niggas. You, uh, what? Oh, you don't you don't message your sister in real life. I don't mess with nobody. I had to block everybody, Charlamagne. Ain't about to get my little few pin of BET game me. Damn. I ain't got time to help the world. I'm not Jesus. I'm not here to i I'm not here to save y'all. Y'all ain't about to steal my uh, Hercules sandals. Hey, what your kids say about the show? <laughs> they not blocked. You blocked them too? <laughs> no, my kids live with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, my kids my, my daughter wrote on the show. My other daughter did makeup. Mm-hmm. So I mean my whole family was uh, oh, my great. husband was at home. He didn't come down, but mm-hmm. you know, if, where I could where I could provide a job, I provided a job. There you go. You yeah. didn't tell us how you uh came to terms with the big dude, the, your husband. What made you comfortable with that one? You know what? Um it took a minute because mm-hmm. I had never kissed a man in over twenty years. And when and, and, you know what? T- Another I've been man. Married. Another oh, man. got you, got Outside you. of her husband. I was gonna ask that. Yeah. What did your husband <laughs> feel about that first when he seen that first kiss on on camera? Oh, uh, we got a serious kissing now. <laughs> in a different episode. <laughs> worse than this. Worse than this. It's a, a, a fucking pack. kiss. Yeah. All right, okay. What you say? What you say? My bad. Um. It was okay, you know, because at first, I was like doing the pilot, it was really hard, and but he was so nice because he was such a he's such a great actor, yeah. and I was like. I mean, it was like, I just hated him. I could, oh, get your fucking hands off me. Then, you know, he's a stage actor, so he was sweating. I was like, oh, damn, I hate this man. Get him away from me. And so, you know, I didn't know him either. But what was so good about him, he was just so patient. He's never tried to push himself on me. You know, he, just, he was so patient with me. And I just told him, I said, dude, I ain't kissed no man in 20 years. And it was literally what grossing me out at the mm-hmm. beginning. But then when we started shooting the nine episode, you you spend time with somebody. It. Right. Oh, it started, right. turning, it started you turning you on. Yeah. Oh, it started <laughs> turning you on. Yeah, you get another oh, that panty, panty line started yeah. to be used for a different reason, huh? <laughs> huh? That's what it was. I said, got a little more coming slapping you on the ass now. That's his ass. Listen, no, I, w- I wanted to show black love. I wanted to show and black love. And black pure, love and it's pure. Too. But, like, this, this is the thing. Jay Bernard, me, too. Let's say his name. Jay, Jay Bernard, Bernard Calloway. Calloway. Yeah. He's a fierce, ridiculous actor. But, like, on their screen test, the two of them. Why are you what, blushing, Miss Pat? Well, don't make me tell your husband now. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell me what you're going to say that after watching all those. Watching the kids, watching them slap my, you in the ass and all that. Uh, my husband's like, who wrote this shit? Jordan. <laughs> 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 no, we have one scene right well. Like, I don't mind kissing him, but one day we, he, they told him without telling me, because Joe would pull that shit all the time. Tell the actors to do shit and don't tell yeah, everybody. I, I like to keep he, him. He, he told him to kiss, and baby, mm, and I love you. Mm. And so after I said, Nigga, I'm married. <laughs> we literally had to cut. She literally did that for the audience. So, I, I like to, I like to give them stuff. I like to keep them on their toes. So I'll like go in in between seats. I'll be like, hey, say this. Like the clit line. Did you did you tell your daddy where the clit is? Yeah, you tell your That daddy was a line is, that the actor yeah. actors didn't know was coming. So it's like something that keeps them on their toes. She literally said that out loud. We had to cut. I was, was like, he was like, and you so sexy. And I talked the first time. I said, nigga, I'm married. What you doing? And he's like, let me work. I said, well. Who the fuck told you kiss me that many times? He's like, they told me. I said, well, nigga, you need to tell me. <laughs> so what was the conversation with your husband when you told him about, hey, babe, you know, there's some kissing scenes, there's some this, so, so how was that conversation? How was that uh, set up? Well, the, the main kiss, I think, is in uh, episode eight. Uh, Wait, I sent it to him. You sent it to him? Yeah, I sent it to him. But my husband a cool dude. I mean, he was, he was like, why you had to do it like that? I was like, that's what the scene called for, Jordan. It's always Jordan. Everything on Jordan. <laughs> but you know what? Some stuff like Jordan would take my personal life because we so close and stick it in my in that dude's mouth. And it's all, you Whoa, know, all Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> got to do what you got to do to get the show on there, baby. <laughs> all right. The devil is a liar. There were times I had to walk out of a scene because I was like, I can't say this to this man. Because, you know, I'm personal with Jordan. He know what I've said to my husband. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you start to connect with these actors. That's when you know you act when you really fucking yeah. feel. And that was a scene where I was like, I can't say this. And Kim Field was directing. In it. And she said, "Bitch, get back in there, and say that." <laughs> but I, it was so hard for me to say. And I told you, I said, "You gotta stop telling me to say I love this man, especially with the words that I've had with my real husband in a conversation." Mm-hmm. And so one scene where I just walk out, but the way they cut it together, it looked like I could have won a fucking Oscar. It was but a- I, I walked out because I was like, I can't keep saying this shit to right. this man. It was a thing. It was a thing where like Pat, Pat was afraid to be vulnerable at a certain point. 
because mm. she's used to being she's used to showing the comedy 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 mm -hmm. but with this show i wanted to go a little bit deeper and i think that she wasn't used to to having to be vulnerable there was a point where she almost cried she said nigga if you make me cry i'm gonna punch the shit out of you <laughs> <laughs> but it's like that's the, that's mm -hmm. the work that like so many people are going to be healed because you're healing through your work and I feel like that's that's also your purpose is you make us laugh, but you, you the, because of your life, you just show us how we can overcome every single thing that we've that we've been through and just take power over. I, I agree, Jordan. You know? I wonder though, does vulnerability always have to be tears or sadness? Because I feel like when not. I read Rabbit, you're being vulnerable. When I see your stand up, I feel like you're being vulnerable. Yeah, I mean, but and I, I didn't, I didn't cry. I mean, uh, it's, it was a scene where we did it about my baby daddy coming back, mm -hmm. my first kid's father, which was fucking hilarious. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of, you know, I kind of get my power back because you know, I, I met him when I was twelve and he yeah. was twenty two, and yeah. all the shit he had taken me through. And so he come back to the house, and and at the end I get my power back. Now that was, I didn't cry, but that was, I remember riding home that night after shooting that. And I just felt I just felt like I won. And I've never felt like I won from this exactly, dude before. Yeah. But and then I, that day, Jordan just bust out crying after mm -hmm. the scene. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck are you He's like, dude, thank you for letting me tell your story. And, you know, I ain't no crybaby ass bitch on no set. So um She went until <laughs> she got in the car, then she cried like a baby ass bitch. She got in the car. <laughs> no, but it was a thing for me. For me, it was like it was like just watching her, just watching her take that power back. Mr. I, I, I believe in spirit. I believe in working with the Holy Spirit and working with like God works through you. Uh, I can't and there was the something there, for mine. there was there was something <laughs> about like like just feeling used in a sense of like letting her get her power back through this medium that felt I, I felt like just a vessel in that way. I was like, dang, like wow I, I i was a part of that i'm I'm a part of that and, and helping her get that, that and, was, and by the way, I know they heard Jim heard her say twelve and twenty two. Either read Rabbit or go watch an old Breakfast Club interview to find that backstory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Miss Pat, what were the conversations like for you at home after filming this? Because I'm sure it made you, because like Jordan was saying, you're being more vulnerable. So what happened at home just from even uh, filming this? Um, well, all my kids was mainly on set. They didn't say anything. You know, my one of my daughters was in the writing room and um, they was just happy. Uh, you know, because I, I share my life on stage anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of that stuff I've shared before, we just put it in a sitcom. What about so, with your husband, though? I think my husband, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. And I'll, after this, we had to go through counseling. Mm -hmm. That's and good. I've, been, we, I've never had to do counseling with my husband. But it was a new take on life. You know, your wife is stepping into the spotlight. And my husband, my husband works at General Motors. You know, he's a just an ordinary dude. And, you know, people people started to, like, come up to him and say shit like, you met Pat Hub. He's like, no, nigga, I'm Gary. Fuck you, let me call me Miss Pat Hub. <laughs> so it was, it was also, it was all, it, it right. affected him in a certain way. You know, like, I don't know if my husband felt like he was losing head of the household. You know how some men feel like, well, she don't need me anymore. Mm -hmm. And and I never thought I needed counseling before. But I knew my marriage was fucking yeah. on the rocks. Wow. I used to tell I used to tell her all it's the time. It's your fault, Jordan, but I know, I know. I literally I used to tell her all the time. I was like, you need to go to therapy. Like, you need to talk about some of this shit. And she was like, nah, I got comedy. I ain't doing no damn therapy. And so literally I wrote their therapy in the season. Wow. I wrote that the couple that she that he started therapy and then they go together and she kind of starts to and that's when she started therapy, which was just a beautiful thing to watch her open up. And I think you you grew a lot. You say you grew a lot in that I did. Process. I learned a lot about the way my husband felt, which I I like I, I travel all the time. So I would go home and it was like it was like he would fall asleep real early. Mm -hmm. Uh uh it would be like rejection. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with him? But I'm so busy trying to create a show, trying to do a special, do all the other things, and it didn't hit me until my birthday party. And uh, my friend Quisha threw me a surprise birthday party, and he didn't come down. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what the fuck my husband? Y'all didn't invite him? And they was like, he wouldn't come. I was like, what the fuck you mean he wouldn't come? It's my fucking birthday. You know, T.I. show up, Debbie show up, why the fuck you ain't going to show up? So I, I was so fucking pissed. I was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So I called him and I said, hey, nigga, you headed for divorce court. What you want to do? Mm. Called this motherfucking counselor my friend gave me. And he we called. But in that session, which I never thought I would ever do counseling, I learned so much about this man that was sitting in my house that I didn't know. 
Damn. I mean, y'all been together so for so long, y'all probably had to uh, get to know each other all over again. We really yeah. did. I mean, the stuff he said in counselor, it, counselor, it actually made me cry. I was like, because one point he's like, I was just waiting to die. You don't need me anymore. I was like, what the fuck you mean wow. you waiting to die, nigga? You had a health care. You going to fuck with? We might not be able to get this shit after you croak over. <laughs> 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 But is she serious though? That she's not even playing. But you know the <laughs> dynamics of your relationship changed, right? It did. It mm. changed. You know, I think it's because you know my my husband is a very quiet person, mm. and then you know I'm. I don't think he ever thought my career was, was would get like this. You know, really? He, he would say he would say shit like, "And I'm not gonna listen to some chick house jokes. You're going on out there, and you out there just fucking around." Cause I worked at General Motors and I worked at Ford. You quit any fucking good job for this shit? And I was like, "Dude, shut the fuck up. It's <laughs> something here. Cause I know when it's something here for me." And you know, he you know he was just ready to leave. He's like, I, he th- I, he was like, I was ready to leave. I was waiting on you. Say it was over. I'm like, you gonna build a castle and let another nigga come in it and keep the lights on for you? Motherfucker, you know how many times I, I messed out your credit card to go do a show that didn't pay me shit? You know how many times you bought me a motherfucking plane? You know how many times you stayed at the house with three sets of crack babies that I raised? Mm. You know how many times that I didn't come home and you would send me your motherfucking credit card and I took your whole paycheck for my dream? And then now we, I get a little money and you gonna feel like you ain't a part of Fuck is wrong with you? Mm. Right. But the counselor, another black man had to set my husband down and open up his mind. Like, my husband wouldn't even let me buy him nothing named brand. Mm. Mm. He wouldn't even take a vacation. If I bought that motherfucker, he's like, I don't want that. Take that back. I don't, I don't want that brand. He wouldn't do none of that shit. Right. We just went to Dids. I bought a motherfucker Louis Vuitton, Sasha, a wallet. He took it all this time. <laughs> <laughs> I just bought a new Thank car. Thank you. I just bought a new car. <laughs> and, you know, like, when uh-huh. I first shot the thing, I was like, hey, I made this money. I want to give you this. I don't want your money. And I was like, he's got to look at it like it's our money, though. That's what I, that's yeah. what you that's what counseling did for him mm-hmm. to realize that we are as one. But for some reason, when my career started to take off, he started to break off and feel like he's not needed anymore. Right. Yeah, his ego was wounded. And that's it was all. like him protecting himself yeah. just in case you did leave him. He wanted to be his ego. It could be nah, it was ego. His always, ego was wounded. Provides yeah. and, and the fact that he can't provide because like a lot, like even myself, like. I want to provide for my family. Like mm-hmm. I enjoy it. And I if you enjoy can't seeing my kids have things that I couldn't have, and my wife seeing things, but if it ever got to the point where I couldn't anymore, I don't know how I would feel. That's wounded ego. Yeah, but he still yeah, works. He just isn't used to her making the money yeah. and getting the attention. But he still works and makes money. Yeah, yeah and he's he got still, a good job. Right. It's not he's that he's not, he's not proud either. It's not that right. he's not proud because Jordan, because, don't try to clean it up now. No, you didn't fuck this woman like that. No, listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you because he he came to that pilot that when we first shot that first episode. Oh, he did. And when I told you, he's not a person of many words. He's not a man. He he speaks when he want to speak and when he speak it matters. But to watch him watch her, like we, every the cast took that bow in front of the audience, and he just like started crying. He boo, he started crying. I thanked him because at the end of the last shoot, I said, I just want to thank you for standing by me. I wouldn't be here without you. You know, all my he did so much back at the house, and just me, me, just, me. You know my beginning, and mm-hmm. and I, I mean, I'm here because this man had my fucking back. Most people wouldn't even take a bitch in with two kids, and then you go get four more crack babies, and we in our fucking twenties. So, bitch, mm-hmm. go somewhere. I'm about to go out here and fuck the world. I ain't got time for this shit. But he buckled down, and he was there for me. So when I thanked him at the pilot, he boo fucking who? He didn't know it was coming either. He boo hooed. And so, you know, I think I think just my career starting to take off him. And he just started feeling another way. And I said, it's mm-hmm. not my money, dude. It's all I money. Really Whatever I do, I'm able to do it because of you. I ain't been home in three fucking weeks. I've been on the road and then literally out here fucking promoting this show. Never complains. He never fucking complains. Right. So, never. But he so got to qu- let you know when things bother him at the same time. That's right? good. He, exactly. he, he, started, he, exactly. he started that after we went to counseling. He really did. So, question: um, When you bl- when you keep blowing up the way you are, Miss Pat, and you get all this money, are you gonna retire your husband the way Tabitha Brown did her? her I sure man? am gonna retire hey, my husband. Okay. I already told him at the beginning of the year, nigga, clock out. Come on, <laughs> home. That's right. I'm, I'm, I'm actually I just put a contract on a house in Atlanta. You got them right. My Congratulations. Husband worked, my Congrats. husband worked fucking. He's been 22 years at General Motors. Why wouldn't I retire him? Why wouldn't That's I? Right. That man have had my motherfucking back. I've seen that man tore ACL at this job, two elbows, motherfucker, a bam, damn near tore his eyeball socket out. But he never fucking complained. Ain't, I, I've been with this man 20 some years. Ain't never put his hands on me. 30, almost 30 years. Ain't never put his hand on me. Nigga, I ain't never went without a meal. Can you see me? Do I look like I missed a meal? <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I mean, yeah, you were supposed to answer that. That was terrible. Why would he say that? 
He was like, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Wow. I ain't mean it like that. That was crazy. And I ain't never had a light cut off. I ain't never been disrespected. I ain't never been called a bitch. I ain't never got hit in the eye on Friday. Nigga with all this makeup on his eye, that last nigga hit me in my eye every Friday. Like it was a dance we were going to. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I? It's your turn now because right. you have helped me get here. When so many other people look down on me and talk, even his motherfucking mama, what you want with that welfare queen? I'm like, bitch, I'm giving you some food stamp. You gonna call me a welfare queen? If I wasn't telling these lies, I couldn't be over there bringing you no food for them roaches to help you eat. <laughs> 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 I can tell that story now because she did. Oh, damn. I was oh my god! Right. I was right. 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 You going a little too far? Now look, what are they saying about? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yet. Well, yeah, it's, it comes oh, on. Uh, this is gonna come on tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. It it comes, yeah it's Thursday. Thursday. What well, okay. comes on today? today. Uh, so. Oh no, we are gonna air it tomorrow. What's today? T- tomorrow's Tomorrow, Thursday. Oh, today. Yeah. yeah. It comes on tomorrow. All ten I mean, episodes. Today. It come on. All ten episodes dropped today. So we gotta see how it do. So everybody gotta make sure they support so that we yes, get the season support. two going. Please, please. Yeah. Please. yeah I might get. It? I might get BET Plus. I mean, I got. Three, four episodes already, but I, I might get BET Plus. What you mean yeah. you might? I listen to no, the No, for you. Club. That's what I'm saying. I'm getting you it for can't you. Say I might. you. Oh, you're right. I'm going do. to get BET Plus because of Miss Pat. What about BET you? Plus has some good shows on there, too. How do you get BET Plus? How do you get BET Plus? You, you subscribe to it. Same way you get I'm, Netflix and Hulu. All right, I'm going to get it then. You know yes. what I wanted to ask y'all? This is the, the thought I had earlier that I lost. With the white people pushing back so much on the show, this had to be before 2020 because it seems like after 2020, things changed in Hollywood. Okay. Absolutely. We Go probably, ahead. you know what, Disney merged after we shot the pilot. Disney, Disney merged, merged with yep. Hulu, oh. and I knew from that day. Then I was like, "Oh, the, 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 the mouse ain't gonna want this. Gonna the mouse ain't gonna want this. The mouse ain't gonna want this." But I still this. spend my money with the mouse. Mm-hmm. God damn it, we just left the mouse. Just left Disney. Yeah, World. but yeah, because yeah, all them questions about race and ethnicity and names and all that that wouldn't have flew after twenty twenty. Yeah. Oh yeah, we did a derogatory. We did a derogatory episode yeah. where we said the word we we, we use nigga. Yeah, uh, yeah, we and, use uh, uh, chink. Uh, yeah, watch yeah, the episode. Watch the episode. We, but and, and it's a it's a it's an episode where you know it's all about like words that who can and who can't say what and why we can't say. Oh, it. see this context. That yeah, meant, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, all, it's, it's never it's never it just is, like no. jokey joke. It's like it's, nah, we got something. To it's say. like what Matt Damon just said when he said he used uh, the f word yeah. and the child told him. It's the same thing in this episode. Yeah. So when, when he did that, I was like, wow, we wrote an episode like that. And it, which is so true because, well, my, you know my daughter's gay. When my daughter first came out, you know, I'm 49 years old. Back in those days, everybody was a bull dyke. That was not, not a such thing as a lesbian. Mm-hmm. So we used that word. And then my daughter was like, mama, you can't use that word. So it was a teaching moment for me. She said, mm-hmm. it's like using the N word. Yeah. So that's why that that's that's where the episode kind of mm-hmm. yeah. came from. So it was, it's always a teaching moment. People so quick to cancel, but sometimes people gotta learn. Mm-hmm. That's, right. About, that's it's, right. It's all about. I feel like that's the thing about that's what sitcoms used to do back in the mm-hmm. day, like All in the Family, Jeffersons, all that shit. Like it was it was about it was a Trojan horse to actually talk about real shit. It was yeah. a Trojan horse to talk about have real conversation, especially in the especially in our community because we don't have those conversations about other races or about other ethnicities or queer identities. We don't have those conversations. So like it was it was it was a way of being able to have that like literally my my pitch for this show was I wanted to make her the black female Archie Bunker like because that was the Trojan horse to have mm-hmm. so many like deep ass conversations they literally got put on Nixon's enemy list because mm-hmm. of a TV show mm-hmm. because of conversations that they were having and those are the same type of conversations that we're having on the Miss Pat show so question did y'all get did y'all get to make the show you wanted fuck yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, dealing with dealing with a writer's room that was the hardest part because you got you know I'm a comedian. Jordan is a playwright. Then you need everybody to make this boat go. So you will have different people come in with their ideas. Mm-hmm. And then like I've been doing comedy almost twenty years. And one of the things I fought for was like original jokes. Exactly. And the people, I was like, you don't think I heard that? So you know, that was times I I I I, I said the wrong thing. Like that, that shit ain't funny. Well, you can't say that to writers. You can't say, man, go on with that booty ass shit. That shit ain't funny. I mm-hmm. heard that shit before. Yeah. But you gotta you gotta come at us a corporate way. Uh, can we try a better way? <laughs> <laughs> I punch it up. That's what you say. Let yeah, me punch right. it up. Let me punch yeah, it up. Let me punch it up. But I was, I was in there saying, Mom, that shit ain't funny. Oh, corporate ass right. Stop laughing at yourself. And Joel was like, this bitch gonna get us canceled. But <laughs> I'm a comedian. When we go on stage and something ain't funny, we like, hey, dude, that shit yeah, ain't funny. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the, as we were saying, I was like, you know, 
people in the industry who have been like working for 25, 30 years and they're used to working on sitcoms that we see on TV and we were trying to build something different. We're mm -hmm. trying to build a whole new machine. So I think there was just a lot of contrast in the beginning of like, you want to say that? You want to do that? You can't do that. You can't say that. We'll both be like, but that's the show we want to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's what we fought for. We want to talk about got. everything. Abortions. Yeah. I mean, but as it's, it's always, I'm, I, I got dark comedy. You know, I stand mm -hmm. on stage and tell a joke about being molested, and everybody can't do that. But in the end, it's funny, because I tell people every night on stage, why you dwelling on shit you can't change? Right. Hey, you ain't going to go backwards down a one-way street, so why are you fucking dwelling on the path? Hey, you can't fix it. It's mm -hmm. already done. I don't dwell on shit I can't, I don't have control of. And there's so many of. people that have never been able to have those discussions that can hear you make a joke about it and then be able to heal themselves from that too yeah so i mean that, that's why i mean i know what i've been through and i've mm -hmm. learned there's so many people out there that been through what i've yeah. been through so when they i hope when they can see me laughing at it that they can laugh at it. and that's why i say i don't care fuck what you go through find the darkest shit in your life and laugh at it because mm -hmm. when you can do that you got control of it i mean my, my ex don't have control of me no more like he used to because i've healed myself that's right. i thought i had to ask him i wanted him to say Forgive, I for, you know, I want, I want him to ask me for forgiveness, but I've learned to forgive him and move on and look where I'm at. Right. right. Yeah, everybody processes trauma different, but what you said is so true. I remember I saw, uh, my therapist said this to me, but I saw Will Smith say something too, like, if you, after a while, what you're holding on to is your problem. Yes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You can't have nobody else come clean up your mess. If you see the shit on the floor, you just don't leave it on the floor. Eventually, somebody got to clean it up, and it's probably going to be you. It's exactly. probably going to be you, and it's going to start with forgiveness. Right. Like, I had to forgive my mom. I had to realize I was in a cycle. You know, my mama, my mama couldn't even fucking read. And, you know, with the things she let happen to us, it would make you hate her. But then I realized, hey, she handed me what was handed to her. That's right. So I have to forgive her so I can move on. And that's why I smile. People are like, I get inbox there. How do you laugh? Motherfucker, what am I going to do? Sit here and cry? What am I going to do? I can't change the shit of the people who stuck their thumb up my ass. I got to keep it moving. I ain't no. nothing I can do. I can't go whoop the ass half of them dead anyway. But I can show sure enough make a funny ass joke and hope that we all heal from it. There you go. Well, we appreciate you. Well, for hold on, one us. more thing, because Jordan, you know, I think, you know, uh, I, I think about you often because I've been saying over the, the in the next five years, if things don't change in America, we are gonna have to move to Ghana. Yeah. And that's what yeah. your whole play was yeah. about. Yeah. That was what years uh, ago. How yeah, long ago two was that? Two years ago. Two, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Would you see that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like it's a. This country is crazy, man. I think I think we're being I think we're being. I ain't tricked. moving to Ghana. It's hot. I got hot flesh. No. <laughs> you already. <laughs> he said you already. What? I can't fool with her. She, no she already tell Ghana? him. Tell him about your hot booty hole. No shit, the fuck up. Tell him about your hot booty hole. <laughs> she got hot flashes in the asshole. <laughs> Flaming <laughs> hot booty hole. <laughs> when you have it hot flashes, like... they move. Have you started hot flashes? Yet? No. <laughs> But I oh, hope I don't get them in my booty hole. Well, they, they coming. <laughs> Is it maybe something well, you eat that comes out? She remind me of Felicia Rashad. She's so bougie. I'm going to put my booty hole. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if I put too much crushed red pepper on my pizza. No, no. Well, you, you know, you're not, what are you, 30? No, I'm older than that. Okay, well, uh, they coming. Now, they're going to come a time when you just going to start heating up around the neck, then it moves to the titty. And just recently, I was just telling him, my fucking hot flesh is between my legs, and it's fucking up my panty liner strip. It won't stick no more because it's just hot down now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you laughing at you. I love this Batman. I'm Foolish. serious. Foolish. You can't control where the hot flashes go. Go ask your mama. I bet she'd be around there with Dude, her clothes on. Do Don't you ask your mama about her hot booty hole. Don't y'all know nobody out there go ask their mama about their hot booty hole, please. So I got I got hot flashes in my ass now. So I'm going to call my doctor when I start. I'm like, hey, do this shit between my legs now. And then this shit done fucking heated up my click. And it shouldn't be doing this during the day while I'm on a plane next to a white man. So it's just hot flashes. So that's why you can't move to Ghana. You can't move to Ghana but, because but, of that. But, like, I think <laughs> all that to say, that's right, why you're not going to go. But the, but the, I um, wish I ain't got no passport to do my wig. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. No, but, but like, I feel like, I feel like Loki, we being duped. Like, I feel like it's too quiet. Like in the White House, I'm so, I, like, I, I'm, I voted for Biden. I voted mm -hmm. for, for, for Kamala Harris. But I feel like 
I don't want us to be fooled. I don't want us to think that just because a regime changes that the problems are fixed, that we ain't got no issues. Problem ain't gonna never I be think. fixed. But that's the problem. But we think we think it is. Ain't I nobody like, never thought no, that problem no, gonna be fixed in this regime. That's a damn country. lie. That's a damn lie. I ain't lie. never thought that. We, we quiet. No, oh, we are quiet. That? No, we are quieter. Uh, that's listen, why they giving no, you all no, that listen, pandemic this is what, money. No, listen, I try to show listen, you how to get. This is what I'm saying. No, listen what I'm saying. You tried to show them. <laughs> I'm not doing that with a bitch. Everybody else doing that. Everybody else taking their ass to jail, too. Everybody else taking their ass to jail. Not, to jail. He had a real business. And he was sitting in the house <laughs> twirling his motherfucking finger. It'll affect him. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, I'm talking about real business. That yeah, motherfucker got a but, real business. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> is that... White people were so up in arms whenever Trump was in office. They've been Everybody, up and on. no, they were not. White people were silent when Obama was in presidency. They thought she was perfect. My they thought she was perfect. No, they they thought it was because they voted for Trump. That's why they thought it was good. What white people you been seeing? I'm talking about the white people. I'm talking about the white people. I grew up in Texas, so like I remember. That's the whole reason. Race. No, You're listen, them uniform listen, races. listen. This is what I'm saying. The reason, the reason why well ain't no more in the first place was because white people, whenever Barack Obama was in presidency, it was like they weren't paying attention. It was like everything is perfect because we have this black person at the front of a thing, right? And then when Trump was in office, all of a sudden the, uh, at the, the devil was butt-ass naked in the street and everybody was like, oh no, we got to get the devil out of here, right? And then when we put Biden in, nobody's worried about the devil no more. Let but it's like, no, we, we, the we still The devil was still the- out there. He was at the courthouse. The, the motherfuckers always lock you up. They were still out there. You just young and you don't pay attention. No, I'm saying that we're not. I feel like we're not speaking up as much as we were when Trump was in office well, because well, it was in our face. Ain't nobody on there telling people. To, did you see the last motherfucker we had? He was outspoken and crazy. That's what I'm saying. He was entertaining. Mm-hmm. He was entertaining. Mm-hmm. So you woke up to turn on the TV. What the fuck this crazy man? What mm-hmm. the fuck the we gonna do this week? Mm-hmm. There's no more of that. All Biden got his motherfucking Botox up on his eye looking like a baby <laughs> ass. You see how that Botox about? Biden, if you don't stop Botoxing your eyes, nigga, you, you gonna die and your eyes gonna still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not seen his eyes look like a smooth <laughs> asshole? <laughs> <laughs> it don't work for nowhere. But I said, what? What is he worried about the wrinkles up on his eye? He got that good Botox. Talk to like three thousand dollars a needle. Cause that motherfucker eyes is smooth like a baby ass. White dude, you ever seen Biden eyes? <laughs> <laughs> look back in your eyes. You know, I'm telling you, oh, Biden got a, a shit ton of Botox. He can't, he can't even smile no more. It's just his eyes stay open. I've been his fucking eyes open. So that's why you ain't heard now. He ain't there getting Botox. <sighs> but that's three- what I'm saying. We, I feel like we got the same heat that we had when Trump was in office. We got to keep that heat. We gotta keep that because we're right. still being locked up. We still being killed. That's so right. Keep that heat. Ain't Black lives don't matter. Keep well, that sitcom heat. Sitcom is today. Premier. Today. Did you watch your yes, I did. Yeah, he did. I, I you told did. him with the thumb joke. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm good. I watched. Yeah, I watched the first. Oh, you, three. Are y'all gonna watch it with your kids? No. no. <laughs> That's why we call it a grown folks sitcom. No, but I, I've done some of the things that you've done before. Like I, I had to turn off the Wi-Fi in the crib when, when my son went a little too crazy with the with the game. And so there's a couple of things, but. Yeah, I enjoyed it so far. And I just want to say thank you. Miss Pat always checks up on me, and I appreciate it. Same. I, I Same. appreciate you. I'm a real nigga. Hey, I'm not here, but I'm a real motherfucker. I, when no, I see you, you out there spending time with your family, it just black love, just beautiful. I, I never met your wife, but congratulations on the new baby. Thank you, thank she, you. She ain't had it yet. Not yet, she, not yet, not yet. I, she, I was like, girl, why would you have a baby with a body like that? Mm-hmm. But anyway, she's beautiful. She what right y'all having? A girl. Another girl? Oh, yeah, so four girls up. and two boys. Four girls that's and two boys. Right. Congratulations. So I would send you a gift, but you're rich. And my shit ain't gonna work out from birth. <laughs> Give us something thoughtful. <laughs> I, my shit come in. I can put it on layaway. <laughs> <laughs> a gift card to Burlington. Yeah, girl. He'll never use my shit. I'll be checking the balance. It'll still be there. <laughs> send me my shit back. Light skinned ass boy. Send my shit back. You ain't gonna use my goddamn gift card. I'm about $200. <laughs> you can leave go in there and buy some baby wipes. <laughs> before the they inspire on the baby white. Oh, my got God. They got date in Burlington. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the show, Jordan. man, on yes. BET Appreciate Plus, Miss Pat. Man. We so proud of you, Miss Pat. Proud That's of you, right. Jordan, man. Jordan, thank, thank you, you for man. staying down, bro, with Miss Pat, man. Stand down and you. finally to meet you, Angela. You are beautiful. Thank you. I'm excited to meet you, too. You know, I was up on that book early on as soon as you sent it up here. So I was always disappointed I wasn't here when you were here, but I'm happy well, for you as well. you beautiful. Thank you for being in the house. First time I met you. <laughs> no, it's Miss Pat Jordan Cooper. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs>